guys, gals, non-binary pals, thank you so much for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. Hey, we would love to have you here live while I'm doing this. See all these people right here? They were telling me we need more friends. So if you are ever bored and you would love to come hang out with us on Twitch, I stream every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We talk about a lot of stuff. I also record these videos live there so you can be here while it's happening. It doesn't cost you any money. It's completely free to join. There will be a link down in the description. If you do enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel out. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you do that again. Helps the channel out. Okay, with all of the pleasantries out of the way, let's talk about the title of the video that obviously you read and you clicked on. So we are going to be talking about our favorite songbird of our generation, Adele. Now Adele has been through a lot. You know, she's been through a lot. She went through a divorce recently. Uh, she recently has lost weight and then there was a big thing about it. And then she kept the weight off there was a big thing about it, and she has still kept the weight off, and there has been another big thing about it. Because whenever she does a, uh, a cover of a magazine, whenever she films a music video and she's still thin or skinny or fit or whatever word you want to use, <laughs> it seems like there's always articles that pop up about how uh, people are actually literally upset. And if you don't believe me, that's what we're going to be reading today. So we are going to be going over this article uh, from Slate, which I've, I've never really heard of, but uh, it says, I have something to say. I'm a little bummed that Adele lost weight. Yes, I know this is not about me, but it's not just about Adele either. This is by Shannon Pallas on the 15th of this month, okay? So this really does happen. Look at her. She looks amazing, I think, but you know, whatever. So Adele hosting Saturday Night Live on October 24th, right? So that's when that happened. If you're not if you're not watching the video, I highly suggest you watch because there's gonna be some photos. But um, we're gonna go ahead and read this article. There's also a really long article from Vogue, but there is a couple things that I want to bring up from that article as well. Um, so just so you guys know. All right, so it's a it says Adele is skinny now. She has been skinny for a while. First in an Instagram post last year. I remember when that post. I think I made a video about it. And then, while hosting Saturday Night Live, this week we got Skinny Adele in a music video ahead of the release of her album 30. So this says, we got Skinny Adele in, in a music video. I just think that that's really, in my, in my opinion, that's really condescending to say it like that. Because imagine if it was like, we got Fat Adele in a music video, right? I hate doing that whole, like, imagine if this was whatever. But that just, again, it seems very condescending. So, you can tell by the way that this article is starting, this person definitely has some sort of bias, right? So it goes on to say, many, many, many media outlets and random internet commenters have celebrated Adele for becoming skinny. This has been met with a very specific form of backlash, which goes something like, Adele is a mega talent whose music is worth blasting on repeat, no matter the singer's size. Please stop treating this like an accomplishment. The backlash is correct. Now, I disagree with saying that the backlash is correct. I can understand where you're coming from if, if you're upset or annoyed, especially because I, I guarantee, and actually, I mean, in the, the article, the, the, the actual interview with Vogue, like it's a really long thing, she talks about how it's annoying having people comment on your way. Another person that this happened with recently was uh, Jonah Hill. He has been someone that has been historically a fat guy, right? And he's lost the weight, he's gained the weight, he's lost the weight, he's gained the weight. He's been through, you know, weight fluctuations quite a bit. And he made an Instagram post, which a lot of people wanted me to talk about. There, there just wasn't much to really make a whole video out of. But he talks about how he would love if people just didn't talk about it. They don't need to say he looks great. They don't need to say he looks fat. They don't need to say he looks bad. They don't need to say he looks good. He's just like, don't talk about my weight or my body. Let's just move on, which I understand. I can understand. I mean, I understand that also it's hard for people not to because just as a society, that's what we're conditioned to. But again, that's kind of besides the point. I'm sorry, I'm kind of getting off topic. So it goes on to say, and yet even as I know that celebrating Adele's weight loss is wrong, I am struggling with something different, which is feeling a little upset about it, which is weird. You are correct. That is very weird that you are upset that someone lost weight. Very weird. 
After all, Adele is an adult human woman and I am a feminist. She can do whatever she wants, wrote Katie Storino, influencer and author of Body Talk, on her Instagram in a post about Adele's slim down, adding the hashtag, wait isn't news. The public seems unable to receive it with neutrality, wrote uh, Sakai Kukul, back when skinny Adele first surfaced. To it, this, I don't know. I don't know what it is about skinny Adele. Why not just say, like, I, this just seems like you're making these points about how weight isn't news, but then you're calling her skinny Adele in the whole article. Like, I feel like, how do you not see the disconnect there? Maybe that's just me, but I just feel like that's so condescending. Besides the point. First surface, to assign a value in any direction to Adele's weight loss, excitement, or disappointment is to over-involve oneself in the dynamics of a stranger's body. It certainly seems like Adele herself would like us to all stop commenting on her core corporeal form i don't know what that word is as she said in vogue's november cover story my body's been objectified my entire career okay so before we um before we go on um in this article i i kind of want to talk about how where i think i think what the one of the biggest issues is here um and this is like with not just with adele but with anybody and this is stuff that i used to do um, I remember when I was bigger, I would look up to people because they were bigger, right? Like I used to joke around and um, I remember I did a, my first ever job interview. They asked me like what, I don't know why they asked me this question. It was at the Van Shoe store. They asked me what uh, celebrity do you like see yourself as, right? And joking around, I was like, oh, I'm like Chris Farley, but before he started doing drugs or like without the drugs, right? Because I, he was a bigger dude and he was funny. And that was like something that I... I really like attach myself to the fact that he was a bigger dude. Would I have been would I have been upset if he had lost the weight? I don't think so. Like another person I really liked a lot was Big Black, rest in peace. But from Robin Big, I really loved him because he was a bigger dude and I was able to relate to him. And I feel like there's there's one thing with being able to relate to someone, and then there's another thing with like saying if this person changes something about them, it's going to make me upset, right? That's where I feel like the biggest one of the biggest issues is is a lot of people they it's like they put too much stock and they attach themselves too much to not even just a celebrity but it'll be a specific part of a celebrity that they really attach themselves to and so if that celebrity ends up changing something about that thing about themselves they feel slighted and they feel hurt and they feel like they deserve a, a, like an apology almost, right? And so what's crazy about this is if you go to the actual Vogue article, which is what we're gonna pull up here, I think that there's there's a really a really important piece to it, which I, I think shows like how frustrating it probably is for Adele dealing with this, right? So again, this is a, a long article. We're not gonna read the whole thing, but I'm gonna read this middle paragraph here. Um, it says, what helped Adele uh, get her through her year of anxiety? And then she says, it was, a lot um a lot of sound baths it was a lot of meditation it was a lot of therapy and a lot of time spent on my own and then she says the gym was key it became my time i realized that when i was working out i didn't have any anxiety i was never it was never about losing weight i thought if i can make my body physically strong i can feel that and see that and then maybe one day i can make my emotions and my mind physically strong she started with her lower back and stomach I have had a bad back and I had a C-section, so I had just nothing going on down there. Um, when I call M Meryl, her trainer, later he confirms that the goal wasn't weight loss, it was getting stronger physically and mentally. She got really turned on um, to movement and especially strength training. So, so turned on that she started doing double sessions. Um, progress was was slow and far from linear. I'd have a lovely night out with friends, she says, and then I'd wake up like a tsunami was coming after me. As a tourist, she likes to schedule things, so she found the unpredictability of her anxiety excruciating. I remember sitting there with two of my friends, she points out to a table further in the yard, and I was like, when will I stop feeling like this? Um, and they were like, in time, and I was like, yeah, but how much time? And one of them cried and I was just like, I don't know, it's gonna be a ride and it was, right? So it's just really, kind. it's kind of sad that this thing that Adele 
is doing for herself, which again, she's saying isn't for weight loss, but this is something that I've talked a lot about, right? If you are someone, and I'm, I'm not trying to sound mean, but if you are someone that has a lot of weight on your body, a lot of excess weight or extra weight or just a lot of weight in general, and you start eating a little bit better, in quotes, eating a little bit better and moving more, weight loss happens, right? So this is something that a lot of people, when they talk about health at every size, they're like, um, intentional weight loss is the, the devil. Bobby Boucher, it's the devil. Um, and so the, it's like, if you intentionally try to lose weight, that's a bad thing. But to lose weight, a lot of times, the things that we do for self-care, like moving our bodies more, maybe eating a healthier, more, you know, more well-rounded diet, weight loss happens, right? Not for everybody. If we're talking about someone that is, you know, already relatively at a straight size body, then yeah, they're not going to drop a ton of pounds, of course. But if you're talking about someone that is really overweight, right? Like where I was and a lot of, you know, a lot of the people watching where, where y'all are, if you start eating better, eating maybe less crap, uh, moving your body more, weight loss is going to happen and that should not be demonized, right? Like I really don't think that should be demonized. All right, let's go back to the first article. Sorry, that was kind of a, got kind of sidetracked. So, but I have been thinking about this all week. I've been thinking, I have been thinking about this all week. Well, that's where you went wrong there, Haas. Um, the thing, the thing is that Adele, Adele had a body type that is not really frequently represented in the world of mega celebrity that she occupies. And partly for that reason, I think it's okay to be disappointed that Adele lost a lot of weight. Um, uh, no, I disagree with that. This sounds like you are just trying to find a reason to feel like it's okay. Like, it's like this whole article is you saying one thing, being like, oh, no, I, I really think that people should be able to do whatever they want and they really should be able to just live their lives. And But also, like, because it's Adele, all of that stuff just doesn't really apply to her because she's so popular, you know? Like, it just doesn't feel fair to me at all. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, right? She goes on to say, um, I certainly am. I don't need to explain to you that the world is very, very fat phobic to the extent that going up a size or two in jeans as I have in the time since Adele's 21 skyrocketed her to fame is a reasonably nerve wracking experience. If you manage to gain weight and or exist in a fat body only with the side effect of a little anxiety, you're doing pretty well. I am using the word fat here, by the way, on purpose. Activists and writers have made the point again and again that though it can be slung around as an insult, it's not a bad word. It is a neutral, even term, as Aubrey Gordon, co-host of the popular podcast Maintenance Phase, has noted. Taking the teeth out of the word fat, displaying fat as a normal and even beautiful way to exist is important. I don't understand why we are sharing all of this information, but okay. We live in a world where eating disorders run rampant. Do you... Okay. I... So you are talking about how you are... You are talking about how you are bothered by that fact. But you are also upset at someone for losing weight. What do you think that that might cause the person to do? Right? Like, how do you not see the hypocrisy of your own article? We live in a world where eating disorders run rampant, affecting normal people and moneyed... Moneyed? Is that a word? Okay. Celebrities alike. In the 2020 documentary Miss America, Taylor Swift... Miss Americana. Taylor Swift talks about her own struggle from going from being very, very skinny to just being very skinny. The latter meant fielding rumors that she was, that she was pregnant. If the pressure to look thin has always borne down on us, it is in some ways getting worse. Today, apps like Instagram and Facetune allow all of us to manage and slim down our images with the fur of a celebrity's publicity team trying to land their client in, the, in a Pepsi commercial. Again, so much of this article just feels like it's grasping at literally anything to try and make the... It feels like... It, it basically, so what this article feels like is what maybe some of you guys might feel like this video is, but it feels like I have a good title of an article 
how can I make this article slash video more than two sentences or longer than 10 minutes so I can get it monetized? That's what this feels like. It's like I have an idea that I feel like sounds good. How can I make this more than a paragraph? That's what this feels like. All right, so goes on to say, I have many personal mantras to bulwark against all of this. One of them is from Storino, the influence and body inclusivity activist. Wherever the bad body thoughts start rolling, I shout to myself, nope. <laughs> so whenever you start feeling bad about yourself, you're like, no. All right, whatever works for you. And then it goes on to say, Another is, wow, Adele is very talented, very beautiful, and also fat. Or it used to be. So you're telling me when you have felt bad about yourself, you have looked in the mirror and said, I know that I maybe don't feel the best about myself, but Adele, she is very talented, very beautiful, and also fat. I, again, putting too much weight on someone that is not yourself, in my opinion. Was it the healthiest thing in the world to pin one's self-esteem? Oh, okay, well, at least they get it. To the shape of another person? Clearly not, because people change. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, especially their weight, which is something a lot of people that are body activists talk about, how your weight changes so much and how it fluctuates so much. Like, that is one of the cornerstones of this movement. So to, again... It doesn't make any sense. This is the entire issue with external validation. It cannot be counted on. It also is kind of we weird to care about the body side of this one lady I don't know. Yes, again, you are correct. But here is the problem. So again, it's like, I know this is weird, but let me try and justify why it's weird. That's basically what this whole article is. But here is the problem. Most people who have excelled in the entertainment business are not fat. They tend to be very, 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 very skinny to very skinny. I wonder um, a lot where we'd get if the greatest poet of our time had been a size 10 in high school. She was, as she was trying for her big break, her early days including modeling for Abercrombie. Again, I don't, this doesn't make any sense. It's so weird. That's why it tends to feel joyous when a talented, non-skinny person makes it through the filter. Adele is also very, very conventionally beautiful. She is very pretty. The images of such a person make the world slightly a slightly less bad place. That's what Adele's major magazine photo shoots prior to the Skinny Vogue shoot did a little bit for me. Now I have a new thought popping up when looking at Adele. I would like to be skinnier too, as Adele also said in the Vogue interview. I also understand why some women especially were hurt. Visually, I represented a lot of women. Dude, it, it's just like at a point where it's... We're just gonna keep reading. Ideally, I think I have... I, I would... I, ideally, I would have no thoughts about someone else's weight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> After all, I am, duh, firmly in the camp that Adele is a human person and gets to do whatever she wants. But this is the one thing I think is worth remembering. She is also a highly produced image, and given the water we swim in, it makes sense if you or I feel a little sad that the image has changed. I'm not sending any blame in her direction. That blame out ought to be reserved for the faceless mass of people making the choices about whom I give record deals and Vogue covers. It's a lot harder to feel mad at them. I don't know who they are, really. You don't know who Adele is either. I'm sorry. Um, but I'm trying my best until we live in a world where we can comfortably, comfortably exist at any size, where we're going to inevitably, inevitably feel things when one of the relatively few fat women's celebrity changes, it's okay to feel a little bit of disappointment. So that is the article. Again, it's just like the whole article feels like it's a, a reason for them to be upset about whatever, right? Now, the funniest thing, okay, I don't want to say funniest, but when you think about this, like, when you read that article, you're like, okay, so this must be a woman that is, um, 
you know, pretty large. They are, you know, they're probably really large and so they felt a lot like Adele and they, it, it kind of sucks maybe that they feel like now they don't have a role model anymore. Okay, so this is the author of that, um, of that article, right? So this is her right here. That's her right there, right? So I don't know, man. Like, I don't know if I'm if I'm being mean, but it just <laughs> it just feels like you wrote this article because you needed something to write about. You know, I think if if Adele wants to lose weight, then she should be able to do that. If Lizzo wants to lose weight, then she should be able to do that. I only bring her up because, again, that's another person that whenever she does something or decides not to do something, people get all up in arms. Um, Rebel Wilson, that's another one. A lot of people get upset if she tries to lose weight. Um, I don't know. It's just, it is crazy to me. I've talked about this before. Like, it is crazy to me that now people genuinely get upset if someone decides to lose weight. I don't know. Th those are my thoughts on the whole situation.